All right, artists, so now that we've um, mixed up this color wheel, let's talk a little bit about the significance and importance of having done that ourselves. When you mix, you start seeing how much it takes of each color to start combining and creating new colors. So I know just a little bit of magenta makes that nice pale orange or just a little bit of blue is all it takes to make that lime green. If I mix up other primaries like the earthier primaries, I understand that I'm not gonna get these bright colors. So mixing starts helping you understand. For example, blue with a little bit of yellow means that I've got a cool blue. Blue with a little bit of red means I have a warm blue. When you mix them yourselves, you actually have an opportunity to see what happens when the colors mix together. And you start understanding what's gonna happen when you mix them on your canvas or if you've used a pre-made um, paint color. It's gonna help you really see and understand how they go together. And then when you have this wheel and you've mixed it yourself, and even though I know we can look at those wheels, having done it ourselves, we start understanding our color combinations better. There's a lot of different ways that we can mix colors to come up with harmonious color palettes for our paintings. But some of our basic harmonious color palettes are going to be very simple. Something like an analogous. Analogous is going to be anything that's um, touching itself on the color wheel. So having our colors all laid out like this in a color wheel will help us understand that. I know that if I had these three on a painting, they're analogous, they're right next to each other on the color wheel, and that's going to create a really nice harmonious color palette itself. So we can play with it that way and we can also do complementary colors. We know about complementary colors, right? Complementary means um, it's the one that's across from itself on the color wheel. Um, most popular blue and orange, purple and yellow, and red or magenta and green. But I wanted to point out something important to you. Complementary for a color wheel is not spelled with an I. It's spelled with an E. And that's because even though we could compliment them and say how nice they look together, because they do look nice together, what we're actually doing is completing the color wheel. So complementary for complementary colors is based off the word complete. So it might be something that you didn't know, but the reason why is because yellow and purple Purple has blue and red in it, and we have then completed the color wheel by using all of the primary colors. And this continues to be the truth for all of them. Red with green, green has yellow and blue in it, and now we have completed the color wheel again. And the same thing goes for all of this. This dark blue has a little bit, uh, a little bit of the red and the blue, and then this one has some yellow and red, and next thing you know, we've completed the color wheel again. So understanding that complementary colors means that we have a little bit of every single color of the color wheel in it. All of these colors combine together to create ourselves every color of the rainbow that we want to create. And by understanding this and understanding different color combinations, you can come up with colors that you like yourself. Now I wanted to point out um, for those of you who took the time to mix instead of just using pre-made colors, you might say, ha, it's starting to dry on me. Here's a little pro tip. Keep a water bottle next to you, spray it down with a little water, and that'll make it last a little bit longer so that we can then move on to making some color palettes that we love. I've got a book here that I use quite often to um, keep track of all of my projects. So. Here's an example of looking at the colors and looking at value. Remember when I said keep the yellow at the top of the color wheel and put the darker colors at the bottom. Now we can start seeing how that the value chart starts laying out and that our, um, we can use that to create a harmonious painting as well by understanding that our colors also have value. And then this is all of my mixing and uh, samples I start keeping in a book. And I'd love to encourage you to do the same thing. I'm gonna put a couple of colors together here for you to see some really great options, complementary colors, and then maybe some other color combinations. So what were we talking about before? Yellow and purple make some really pretty complementary colors, right? Sometimes it's not important to wash your brush, but in this case, we're gonna make mud if we don't. 
How about some of this magenta? And our opposite on the color wheel, green. This is pretty basic. I know that you've seen this before, probably 100 million times. So our complementary colors, um, let's see, we need orange and blue. These are colors that you hear about and know about quite often as being um, great colors to use as combination. But I've been kind of playing around with this thought that maybe um, artists don't understand why they're not getting clean, bright colors when they mix. And especially when those, when you say, okay, I know that I'm going to love blue and orange together. I'm going to love green and red together. I'm going to love purple and yellow together in a painting. But why, when I'm painting this nice yellow next to a nice purple, and as I keep mixing, why does it start doing this? Why are my colors making mud? We understand that now that we've talked about the fact that complementary colors complete the color wheel. Anytime that you're using complementary, you're bound to make mud. And one of the important things about this lesson that I wanted to remind artists was um, what happens if their colors start touching while they're wet and why they might not get clean, pure colors. So in order to have a really good color palette, we need to be conscientious of what's going to happen when we mix those colors together, which is why we mixed this color wheel in the first place. Um, our complementary colors are even closely related complementary. So if I had this one and I had this over here, I'm going to start making mud on my canvas. And we don't want to make mud usually. We want to keep our colors very pure. So that's something to be thinking about when you choose your colors, especially if you're using fluid paints, that those colors are going to make mud when they run together. However, we also have an opportunity to use this to our advantage. Taking this mix of, of um, purple with a little bit of yellow in it, now I've desaturated that purple. And if I add a little bit of white, you're going to see what happens. Now I've made these really beautiful shades of muted colors. And that is the power of understanding what complementary colors can do. You can make mud or you can intentionally mix them and desaturate those pure colors to create beautiful colors that are um, earthy or gray. And that's how you can take this whole color wheel and create just about anything that you want by combining complementary colors. I'm going to show you again another example of this so that you, I can really help you understand this. So we've talked about muted colors in the past in true colors. We've talked about desaturating. But this idea is to remind you that you can make mud on purpose or on accident. You can make mud, right? You can make mud. Or you can purposefully take a color. I got to keep cleaning out my brush here. You can purposely take a color like green and add just a tad bit of that red in it, right? And next thing I know, I've made this beautiful evergreen, earthier, more natural color. Look at how pretty that one is. I've also made it a little darker. That's a great color. So by using a little bit of its complementary color, now I have a whole new world of possibility. What happens when we've made natural colors like that desaturated? Well, let's first test out what happens when I do that with blue, because blue is such a pretty color. And you think, oh my goodness, if I add a little bit of orange, I'm just gonna muck it all up. Here's another example, just a little bit. I'm not using a lot. Now, you can probably not really tell what's going on here because it's very dark on the screen, but then again, I tell you again, it's not a pure color. It's a, it's a desaturated by just using a little bit of orange with the blue. That's what I get. Look at that muted, pretty color. And that, that choice to continue to do that goes on and on. Now, if you do this and you create a swatch book like that, now what happens when we take, um, what about, I need a little bit more blue on my, mix here. I'm going to get myself this really nice earthy color, just a teeny teeny bit. 
It might look like mud, but the intention is, is to have control over it. When we do it by accident and they start blending and you're like, oh crap, that's not what I wanted. That's not what we're trying to do here. What we're trying to do is learn the difference between the accidental mud making and the purposeful mud making. Because when we do it on purpose, we start getting all these possibilities of gorgeous shades. And now what happens when I have a beautiful shade like that? Look, I think that's such a pretty color. See, look at this one put a little dab of orange right next to it. Look at how pretty that saturated orange is next to the desaturated bluish green. Here I've desaturated this orange and made kind of a brownish color. It's really earthy and gorgeous, but right next to it, if I put blue green, ugh, that's great. Now what does this mean? When I've played around and I start seeing these colors next to each other, I've got this great earthy color, dark green. What if I take my magenta, and I put a little bit of white in it, so I've got a great value. I've got that really dark value. Pretty! Uh, and I could even come in here, put a little dab of that. We've got another great color combination. What goes with this one here? That's fun. That's got a world of possibilities. But what if I don't want such a bright, saturated green? What if I take this really bright green and I just add a little teeny dab? I'm gonna need more green. This is the power that you have in discovering how the colors work together and how you can make more creative color palettes. Here's the key to figuring out what you like. Start making little color charts for yourself. Start putting different ideas and color combinations together until you say, hey, you know what? What I really want is I want this maroon color. Oh, that's great. I love it. What could go with that? I need a little more white on my palette. That's a color combination I would use. And you start saving up these colors for yourself and you have a chance to really start creating. Oh, that's beautiful. You can start seeing it together. This is okay. I'm not sure how I would feel about using this, but if I was creating a landscape or an earthy scene, that might work great. Could you imagine the sea, the sand? We've got something gorgeous going on here. It doesn't really matter what you're trying to do, whether it's realistic or landscape. Just put these colors down and start playing with the possibilities of what you like and what's gonna go together. Um, it's making these swatch books and making these little um, palettes for yourself that you're going to be able to discover what your true colors are. That's what I would say. What what are your true colors? Your true colors are going to be something you're naturally drawn to. And where do those ideas come from? They come from a little bit of everywhere. Here we go. I love this. That's a great combination. Now look, ooh, if I'm not careful, I'm going to make mud. And I know that. So I've got to either let it dry or choose a different combination. So here you have it. The more you play, the more you're gonna understand these colors. You know, that's the purpose of mixing them yourself and playing with them and putting them down on paper to see for yourself which ones you're gonna love and which ones might not work so well. When you're gonna make mud and when you're gonna make something really pretty. Right now you can tell I'm crushing on this blue-green with a pop of orange. Such a fantastic combo. I'd totally love to see this one in a big painting. But here's something that's really important that I wanna talk to you about. Once we've decided on a color palette, whether it's something that we picked ourselves or it's something that has been designed for us through any other artist who's given you a really great palette to work with. Here's an example. Now, they're really bold, very saturated color. The problem that I see over and over again is artists take that palette very literally. They see those colors and they use just the colors that have been given to them and they use them all purely saturated, all the same value and really honestly in equal amounts. And I created this painting for you so that you can kind of have a visual reference of what maybe not to do. When we are given choices and options in color palettes, whether we've designed it ourselves or somebody has given us a beautiful color palette to work with, the idea isn't to translate it literally and create just this abstract of pure saturated equal amounts and equal values. Because when we do that, we've created a boring painting. It's understanding how those colors mix and knowing how to get a good value range and maybe use certain colors in more quantities than others. See, look at that. That red is just a pop of red in such a small amount. Now this was a quick painting that I did to give you an example of what to do, what not to do. You see that difference? 
far more effective when we vary the amount of paint that we use of each color, when we vary our values from very dark to very light, when we choose to use some muted earthy colors next to something that might be a stronger pop of color. Now you have the tools because you've learned how to mix colors, you know what's going to happen. When you use a pre-designated color palette, you know how effective those colors are going to work because you also know how to desaturate them, you know how to make darker values and lighter values, and the more power you have in understanding how color works, the more success you're going to have with creating color palettes and paintings that are the right composition, the right value. Honestly, color, when we know that color is the first thing that speaks out to somebody, it's the first thing that we notice in a painting, then we really have to get them down right. So there you go, artists. There's the color wheel in all of its glory. Have you learned how colors work better today because of this lesson? I hope that I've empowered you to really grasp the concepts of color theory and how these colors work in relationship to each other, how they mix, and how you have the ability to create beautiful color palettes for yourself. I really appreciate taking you on this journey with me through my process and where I've come with true colors and how I create color palettes that I know are harmonious. So as a little fun goodbye, I'm going to take you on a little journey through my color swatch book of about the last 10 or so palettes that I've been making for Color Crush Creative. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me, artists, and I hope to see you again soon.